Hi, boys and girls. Uh, I have another story for you. And today's book is called Houses and Homes. And this was written by Ann Morris. This book has photographs instead of illustrations. Ken Heyman took the pictures. What do you notice about this front cover? Pause and talk about it. This whole book is about different kinds of houses and homes all over the world. Books that tell facts are called, yep, nonfiction. Let's read about and learn facts about all these houses. Houses and Homes. Picture of a home here. The world is full of houses. Look at the different houses. What do you notice about them? Pause and talk. Big houses, little houses. Bright houses, white houses. Do you know who lives here? Houses that move. Mean that these houses move? How do you know? Pause and tell someone. And houses that stay. And I don't know if you could tell by the picture, but these are houseboats. in a row? What does it mean that these houses are lined up in a row? Go ahead and pause and tell someone. You may have noticed that all of these houses here are attached to each other. They share a wall and same here. Or all alone. Filled with families. Just right for one. This house right there. Build your house with what is handy. Wood. These houses are all made of wood, but how are they different? Pause and tell someone. Or stone. Neat houses. Or straw or mud. or almost anything at all. Weave it, nail it. Now, this picture up here, what are they weaving to make part of the house? Oh, I'm sorry. It could be a roof the sides, or even part of the floor. Tie it with rope. Build it on stilts. Look 
closely at the house in both of these photographs. If the houses are built on stilts, what do you think stilts are? Pause and talk about it. Why do these people need to build their houses on stilts? Pause and talk about it. For those who aren't sure, stilts mean kind of like um, pieces of wood that bring them up. Sometimes it's concrete, it's not always wood, but you'll see here that they are in the water. And if the houses were on the ground, then that would be a problem. And so they built them up out of the water with stilts. And that's all these wood pieces here. Let in the air to keep it cool. Fill in the cracks to keep it warm. Why do you think it's important when deciding what kind of house to build? Stop and talk about it, please. Fill it with love and make it a home. What makes a house a home? The author of this book wanted you to really think about that. All right. So that's the end of our story, House and Homes. I have a few questions I want to ask you about what we just read. And I want you to think about not only the pictures, but what you remember. And I'm just going to lift this up a little bit here. Okay. Now, um, how does this book show you that houses can be different? Stop and think and talk about that. Yeah, they showed so many different kinds of houses. Some are big, some are small. Um, some were kind of crowded together, all hooked together. And then some were all the way themselves. They used different things to do it. So there's lots of di different ways to make a house. What are some different things houses can be made of? Stop and think about it. Talk about it. If you remember in the book, they talked about wood, they talked about stone and straw and mud. Now, think about all the different materials that people use to make their houses. Share some examples of the reasons why people chose those different materials. Just stop. Yeah, they use the materials that they can find with where they live. They use materials that will protect them from the weather and places they live. So think about it here. We don't have a lot of sand or snow. Like if we wanted to build an igloo here, we'd be in trouble. But we could build a wood house because we have lots of trees. And think about a place where there are no trees. They might, and it's really hot, they might use mud. And if you're living in the freezing cold up in the Arctic, you don't want a house made of just kind of sticks and some straw and different things. You're going to need something that's really going to keep you warm. So that's why they use different things. Now, the author wanted you to think about what homes have in common. I want you to talk to somebody about what the homes in this book had in common. I'll give you a little hint, it has to do with families. We're getting a lot of family time right now. Yeah, it's that there's lots of love in the homes, there's families in the homes, that's what makes a home. Now, the photographs are super helpful for learning about how things really look. How did the photos in this book help you understand more about the homes? Turn and tell someone.
Now, what questions do you have about the houses and homes after reading this nonfiction book? You can either talk to your family or your imaginary friend or your pet, or you can send me a message on Seesaw if you do have some questions that you might want answers to. All right, so I want to move into um, the part about writing. Um, I want you to be writing about what we just read. And so I want you to think about all the things you noticed about the houses in this book. Really take a look and think about them. Well, not take a look, but like think in your brain and talk about them a little bit. Okay. Now, what I'd like you to do is to draw some of the houses that you saw in this book and write one thing, just one simple sentence about one thing you learned. So again, you're just going to get a piece of paper. Doesn't matter what kind of paper. You're going to draw some of the houses in the book and then write about the one thing you learned. Your picture and your words should match up pretty well. So if we're going to talk about um, houses being made of mud, you're probably not going to draw a picture of an igloo. So just make sure that your picture and your words match. I would love to see pictures on Seesaw of your hard work. I can't wait. Bye, guys.